just messing around with something that I didn't get to a lesson on this week. Well, I got to some of the lesson, but not to that part of it. Not sure that's ever going to happen, but uh, we'll see. You never know. It is, uh, we are in March, March 2nd. Finally, things have warmed up again. It's been a cold week, week or so around here. Kind of, uh, well, anyway, can't really complain. Still sitting here with the doors and windows open finally after a, a little cold spell in Northern California. But it's been a fun week for me playing the guitar, just personally. Part of it was because I did, I had a chance to um, do a little guest lecture thing at Santa Clara University this week at uh, talking about slack key guitar. Um, didn't play as many songs as I'd hoped to because, as usual, I got wrapped up in stories about the songs and things like that. And pretty soon I look at the clock and say, mmm, gotta cut out five songs right now. But, but it was fun, and uh, one or two TG members came, came, uh, came to check it out, so hopefully we'll get a report from them, from, the, from their angle, some of my other students did. But that was my fun week, so I had a chance, and that's part of why we had the resurrection of Slacky stuff a little while ago. There's still a few more of those floating around, but um, anyway, it was, it was really fun. This week, though, we uh, kind of explored some of the same different, different directions we've been working on, although one was, one was brand new, I think. And that was, we looked at Buddy Holly, Well All Right. Now what I played at the beginning of this was one of the covers. Of course, Eric Clapton and um, Steve Winwood and their super group, Blind Faith, threw together a pretty cool arrangement of Buddy's tune, Well All Right. Well, this week in the Target program, we took a look at kind of the way Buddy did it. more basic. Now, of course, Eric introduces dual, this kind of uh, harmony lead guitar thing. Now, I didn't address that in the lesson and probably don't plan to, but if you want to mess around with it, it revolves around a D minor chord with the notes mostly in thirds when they're on the second and third string, and fourths when they're on the third and fourth string. Okay, got it? Enough for this week's challenge. But, um, anyway, Oh, and speaking of Buddy Holly, we had a fly on the wall um, that I think helped a lot of people out who had been working on Not Fade Away. So again, I want to thank my, uh, my student and good friend Fred for being so accommodating with letting us uh, let the cameras run during his lesson because I think a lot of people get a lot of stuff out of, out of watching the stuff that Fred and I work on. Of course, this goes for Kevin and Ed and Sandy and, and Jacob and everybody else that, that contributes their uh, lesson to the... the overall better well-being of the TG community. So, well, speaking of the TG community, what's going on with the banner? I haven't seen anything in a week or two. I, I'm hoping someday soon to replace this thing with that thing. So uh, let's have an update on the banner when we can. Um, okay, back to, oh, these are getting more and more scattered as, the, as spring is getting in the air and I can barely breathe and everything else. But that's what happens. Messing around with some few, from some pretty cool tunes. I don't know if I uh, someday I might get to a lesson on this. Okay, trivia buffs, spot it. Let's see. Um, oh, we stayed in the Guess Who world with um, No Sugar Tonight. <laughs> Of course, it's done with a capo, but um, kind of a fun lesson, a little medley that um, Randy Backman and Burton Cummings put together of individual songs, No Sugar Tonight and New Mother Nature, and eventually they were singing the two songs over each other, so that was a fun one for me to put together. And um, again, we've sort of been on the Guess Who kick for a while, I think we've lately looked at These Eyes, oh yeah, and that was last week though, I think. Um, what else? Let me take a look at my list. Oh, speaking of Fly on the Walls, Kevin and Kevin, um, again, one of the movies that he really liked was Crazy Heart. And so he came in and we've been working on all kinds of songs. This week we did another one, but I'm not going to tell you too much about that yet because we might, we might tackle it a little bit later. But this week we looked at Fallen and Flying and really turned it into more of an ear training thing. Again, listen to these chords and figure them out with some unusual timing on when some of the changes happen. Or it just doesn't always start where you think it's going to. So that's the kind of unusual thing about that. Let me take a look at my list. Oh, and again, we've had the um, uh, student reviews, and now I'm glad to see more coming up. So, 
I'm, I'm a little ahead on them, but now I'm going to be a little bit behind too. So we took a look at um, at Tom, his rendition of classical gas. Again, Tom does a great job on just about everything he plays, and he tackles the hard stuff. And I've had a lot of students lately working on working on our surf tunes. Not this one, but this one. Anyway, so in the student reviews, we talked a little bit about, about Wipeout and, and some things that I like to have people listen and pay attention to with that. Um, let's see, there was another, let's see, we talked about the Guess Who, we talked about, didn't talk about this yet. Now, I have one of my students that, uh, have, that is not up to the um, fly on the wall thing yet, but I'm working on it. And um, she's been playing songs by people like Stevie Nicks and Jewel and Sheryl Crow. So it's bringing some of the uh, female singer-songwriters back into my rotation here, and that was, of course, Leather and Lace. Now, speaking of Leather and Lace, that was also one that has been on the Recommend a Lesson list for a long time. And I do want to mention that next week, and for the, very, for the foreseeable future, many of the lessons will be coming from the Recommend a Lesson list. So I've been uh, able to spend a little bit more time with that lately and have been having a lot of fun with it. Who knows? You might see a little more Neil. Maybe some James. Or uh, maybe back to... Uh, Um, but I'm, I've seen a lot of songs on there that I really like, some not even by guitar players. So stay tuned for that because you never know where, where I'm going to go with this. I'm having, uh, but again, certainly appreciate all the uh, recommendations that people have been putting out there. Let me see if I've forgotten anything I want to talk Oh, yes, two last things uh, before I get back to playing. Practicing, I should say. song I wrote a long time ago called Lemon Twist that I get sidetracked with every once in a while. I played a lot of sound checks when I'm doing things just because it's sort of goofy and sort of weird. Uh, okay, what was I going to talk about? The two packs. So for our non-target members that like to pick up their lessons in either single lessons or packs of related stuff, we had after many lessons coming out by uh, some of these artists, not to guess who yet, but Badfinger, we have a six-pack of Badfinger tunes, and then a ten-pack of Damien Rice songs. So I know a lot of people have been really interested in really finding out how he does stuff. And one of the reasons I pursued this as much as I did was because after a little bit of research, found that nobody out there was really teaching how Damien had done any of his stuff. So, um, yes, it got a little... Uh, um, a little long, but it was really f it was it was fun doing those songs. So again, if you're a Damien Rice fan and you just want the Damien Rice tunes, they're now available as a individual purchase. Don't have to even be a Target member. Of course, Target members, you know the, the drill. You got you got access to everything all the time. The last thing I want to get to is got a request. Well, there are a few requests going on on the forum of things I should uh, try to address. But this week I'm only going to get to one. And that was one of our longtime members, Pete, had been asking about something that you might see in some of my, in some of the videos. I want to introduce a little prop here. Wait a minute, let me get my plastic guitar stand. This is the wooden guitar stand that I use when I'm uh, well, when I'm here in the cabin. It's what lives. It's what lives here, and so you'll see it in the fly on the wall videos. I've probably had it for 30 years, and it's definitely showing some wear, some shop wear and things like that. But it's basically a lathe, um, you know, post with a, you can see, 
what happens up there, felt lined stuff. And then at the bottom, three legs with little padded areas that let you set the guitar right here. The neck sits in there. And of course, the tripod base keeps it very stable. Looks about like that. So, okay, enough show and tell. Pete, if you make one of these, send me the prototype, man. Oh wait, I've already played that for you before. Well, I think I need to get to work. time pieces I ever learned. I guess I got to go back and work on it. I will see you next week.